Hi everyone, we're going to take a look at the Protractor tool in Active Inspire today. We're going to look at where we can find it in the software, what the features of it are and how we can use it in lessons to help the kids really learn. Alright, so without further ado, I'm going to turn to a new fresh page. So there are three places I can find the Protractor tool. I always like to come to my tools via this little tools icon on my toolbar. It's just a habit. Um, if I go to maths tools, I can then scroll down to the protractor tool and turn it on there. Okay. I could also have gone to my main menu, tools, and down to maths tools and found protractor. That's a little bit long winded. And of course, at the top of my page, I've got my menu tabs. And I can click Tools and Maths Tools Protractor. If I wanted to, I could also pop it on my toolbar or I could use this icon here to switch to a Maths profile and then the Protractor sits here with the other Maths tools on my toolbar. Okay, all right. So with the Protractor, uh, depending if you're using a touch board or, or a, a touch panel or an interactive whiteboard that just has a stylus or pen capability, you'll be able to use the Protractor slightly differently. Obviously with touch screens, so the 500 series board, the active board touch or the active panel touch, I could just use my fingers to rotate or to stretch the uh, Protractor. If I'm using a 300 series board or a 100 series board, so those are the interactive whiteboards that only function using um, our electromagnetic pens or our active pens, then this next bit is more relevant to you. Depending on where I move my mouse or my pen or my cursor, in other words, across the protractor, you'll notice that I get different icons and that is because the protractor is actually a tool. It's not just an image that we've dragged out of the library and plonked on the page to sort of see through. It has um, functionality, I guess, as you'll see in a moment. So if I want to move this around the page, obviously on a touch screen, I just touch on it anywhere in this area here, which is where my cursor shows um, the cross okay so it's within this boundary here and I can dra drag it around the page okay if I want to stretch it I would move my cursor to this area here where I've got sorry if I want to rotate it I would move my cursor to this area here where I have the rotating symbol and I would click and rotate and if you also notice down on the left hand side there's a little box with numbers and it's showing how far off the horizontal I have rotated just down in here. Um, if I move my cursor further out outside this little line here it gets a stretchy symbol so again if I'm using a touch screen board I could just put my fingers on on the protractor and stretch it or my finger and thumb and do the pinch action and it would stretch out and in like this okay so this is fantastic because often uh, when you're teaching in a whole class or even a small group setting and you're trying to show the students the angle, protractors can be a bit fiddly, it's hard to read, you can stretch it so it's nice and big and easy, easy to read. Okay, um, I'll just move that in a little bit. Now there's one more feature of the tool. If I come and grab my pen tool, uh, it's on red and nice and fat and I'm not sure if you can see the little red circle or circumference around the nib of the pen um, over here. As I move in, watch it jump down onto the edge. See it jump there? And basically, it's going to allow me to... I've got the wrong setting on. Excuse me for a moment. It's going to allow me to draw. Wherever I move my pen, it sticks like glue to the edge of the protractor there, okay? So let me go into the settings. On the protractor itself, there's a little menu icon there or note icon. And when you click on it, you can do various things. Let me move this up a bit, sorry. 
I could use a full protractor if I wanted the whole 360 degrees. I don't, I just want 180. Um, you'll notice that I have the arc ticked there. That was my little mistake I made just before. Um, it means that when I'm drawing against the edge of the protractor, that's all I get, my line against the edge, or in other words, an arc. Let's get rid of this one. Okay. If I change that setting to closed arc, this is what I get. So I'll do it on this side. Okay. So a nice closed in shape there. If I chose fill dark, and this is my favorite, which is why it was still set on that one before, this is what I get. I like that for the pure visual element, nice and solid. However, of course, it depends on the purpose that you would like. Okay. Um, so how to use this in a lesson? Well, very obviously, I can have angles on my page and be measuring them. So let's take a quick look at how we can pop, pop angles on the page. Over here on my toolbar, and this is on any toolbar, it's on the original toolbar. As you can see, I've got my maths toolbar set. It's still on that one. I click on my shape tool. And over here, we've got um, a very interestingly named shape, the line chain shape, or as I like to call it, the zigzag shape tool. And basically, oh yeah, set on black, I can now click, 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 and create my own shapes, or double click and finish the line, okay? Now the reason it was going to go yellow on the inside is because up on this little uh, color palette up here, yellow was chosen. If I wanted a hollow shape, which I'm going to want very shortly, so I'll set it now, I would choose the X. So that means that if I join up my shape like so, it will be hollow, it won't have a color in the middle of it. Okay, um, if I turn on the protractor there, I can, of course, come and measure my angles like so. Okay, and if I wanted to draw that angle in, I could come and grab pen like so okay and it looks like it is about 53 degrees okay so we can use it for the obvious for measuring angles but we can also use it for investigations so for instance I might want to set my class an investigation for uh, investigating how many degrees there are in a triangle or is it true prove that there are 180 degrees in a triangle on the interior angles of a triangle so I'm going to set up a triangle I'm also going to show you a little sneaky um, way to put a grid on your page uh, there's a method to my madness so bear with me I'm going to right click with my mouse cursor turned on that's important I right click and I choose a grid designer. This looks horribly complicated. Don't worry about it. You tick visible, the grid comes on the page. If it's too small and I want it bigger, I click the plus, or if it's too big and I want it smaller, I click the minus there. And if I want to change the colors, so for instance, I want to make it blue like the kids' maths books, I can do that. Sneaky little how to put a grid on your page there. Okay, now I want to draw a triangle, so I'm going to come and grab my shape tool. I would allow the children to draw the shape on, on the board for their investigation. Any triangle. Um, the reason I've put a grid on it is pure laziness. I don't want to have to move my protractor too much, and I want this line here that I'm putting in now to be horizontal, so I don't have to rotate the protractor too much. So that's my own sneaky little thing, but it could be absolutely any triangle shape. Okay, and I'm just going to remove that grid now. So I go to my spray and white bottle there and clear my grid. Okay, so if we were doing an investigation, I'll whip out my protractor. I'll grab my pen. I'll leave it on red for now. 
and this is why I'm being a little bit lazy. I don't want to have to rotate. So two of my angles are going to be here. Okay, I fill in my first angle there. I'm going to drag across here and I'm going to change the color of my pen. Make that one orange. Nice big angle here. Okay, all the way around like so. And now I have to do my first rotation. So, is that right? And I'll do green. Okay, that's about there. Oops, missed it a little bit. Okay, I'll just move that to one side. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my shapes, and again, this is why I was a little bit lazy, and I'm going to put my shapes together. Like so. These are my angles rather, not my shapes. And so you see, let me just rotate that into place a little better. You can see very visually already that those angles within the triangle do in fact add up to 180 degrees. So if you've got kids who are really struggling, it doesn't quite rotate back to zero for me at the moment with my mouse. But you get the idea. I can then put that over and we can look. Yes, that's definitely 180 degrees. Um, it's a lovely, lovely visual way to help those kids who are struggling with that concept of understanding how the angles can come together to add up to 180 degrees. So hopefully you've learned something about the protractor tool today. Enjoy. <laughs>